Dr. Kosuke Mutani. He is Partner Advisory Center at International Enterprise Singapore and a senior advisor to Development Bank of Japan in Singapore, based in Singapore. He is among the top figures in Japan in the field of demography and regional economy promotion. I think it is very important that the regional aspects of demographic dynamics be better understood. For us, this audience, we have been used to looking at Japan in terms of the flying geese theory, where Japan, through Meiji Restoration 1868 onwards, and more recently was among the first Asian country to attain the developmental sta development country status. And many of the other NICs and other followed suit after uh, Japan. Now Japan is proving to be a different type of flying geese uh, model where it is experiencing among the most rapid aging and the extreme aging that it has been experiencing is not going to be a unique phenomenon because there are already geese behind Japan who are demographically following Japan very rapidly as the lecture series will make clear. So we now have an opportunity to learn from Japan and its experience in a very important area of how to cope with the aging population. And in some countries in Asia, including Japan, with declining populations, which is very different from just aging. While working as a regional development consultant of the Development Bank of Japan, DBJ, Dr. Motani has been devoting himself into creating and presenting strategies for national and local governments, private enterprises, and NPOs towards their economic prosperity and business success. In 2008 alone, he made nearly 400 presentations at various conferences and so on. I don't know how do you do that more than one a day uh, per year. Uh, he also wrote 70 articles on, in five newspapers and 10 magazines during the year. Uh, it is great that his employer, DBJ, has given him a sabbatical leave, uh, but apparently he is as active and as busy as ever, uh, even during his sabbatical. Not only with his expertise in finance, marketing, and corporate strategy development as an MBA of Columbia University in New York in 1994, he also has excellent interpersonal communication skills to form common understanding about facts and consensus on mutual benefits among members of a group that he joins. He has also been known as a catalyst for uh, out-of-the-box uh, lateral thinking on many issues. So the, I very much look forward to the three series of three seminars that he is going to give to the, to the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy. May I now request him to make his presentation. Thank you, Professor. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you very much for so uh, into kind introduction to me. Uh, me uh, to you. Uh, I'm Motani uh, from Japan. Uh, thank you. I know uh, there's uh, some Mutanis living in India with a certain tribe or uh, group. 
But uh, my Motani is a very rare name in Japan. Uh, it, original meaning is just a seaweed valley. It's not so beautiful name, actually. <laughs> uh, every valley has seaweed, kind of, uh, kind of uh, allergy valley or something. But uh, I temporarily live in Singapore for nine months, and I have to leave at, by the end of the March, so uh, only two months left. But I'm so glad to have this, these great opportunities to have, give, uh, have this lecture series. Uh, it's more than, far more than I expected that I have three chances, I mean, uh, to give lectures with the one series. So uh, I will have enough time not only talking what I learned, but uh, I will have enough time to discuss with you and get a great stimulus uh, st from uh, the Singaporean audience. That should be a lot more active and innovative than Japanese audience, I believe. <laughs> Uh, also, it's an international body, so please, I try to, uh, in next session, I try to introduce uh, some figures about many countries, as many countries as not possible, not only Singapore and Japan, of course, including China and India, and try to include Indonesia and Vietnam, uh, but if you have any requests, please tell me, uh, don't miss this country, then I'll try to, to prepare by the next time. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm used to stand, stand up, but uh, can I? Uh, uh, this is the three, three uh, times lecture series. Uh, I'm sorry, I speak uh, American accent English pretty fluently compared to other Japanese, but actually I really lack the language knowledge. Uh, except Japanese, so I lack vocabulary, and I often maybe make uh, mispronunciation too. A little better than Singlish, I hope, but uh, <laughs> basically, when using English, I'm very talkative. I mean, one of the most talkative person in Japanese in English, but maybe I'm speaking very less intelligent English <laughs> with few vocabulary. Please forgive me about that. But if I, when I use Japanese, I give very, very decent, very high standard presentation, but you never know. <laughs> okay, can, can I change the, uh, the, to my presentation? Yeah. And uh, this is three times lecture series. And the first, this session, I'm sorry, I largely talk about Japan, but don't think I know only about Japan. But, but uh, to understand, as Professor Asher told you, that is exactly what, what, what we're going to do. I mean, to understand your future, then it's very easy, way, the easiest way to learn Japanese current situation. And you will see uh, it's a kind of a future of every Asian. And of course, you can avoid stepping on the same bomb Japanese already hit. But uh, basically, the situation is the same. You have to walk through the same war field with a lot of bombs hidden. So f this time, I'll tell you about not only demography, but real econ from the figure of the real economy, what's happening in Japan. It's totally different from what is told in newspaper and TV. Uh, because in Japan, it's a big problem. Something written in English, English about Japan is very limited, always telling lie, <laughs> a lot of lies. Uh, uh, Amer most Americans don't understand what's happening there. And the second session and in, on, in February, I'm going to uh, show some figures about Asian countries. What uh, is the population will structure will be uh, in the near future? And even India, I suspect, will see the decrease of the population in the next four decades, uh, after four decades maybe. Uh, so I'll show those figures. And then after listening to two lectures, then you, all of you come up with uh, the question, what are we going to do? Is there any way, anything we can do for that? Is it, isn't it like a tsunami or earthquake that is something outreach of human power to cope with? Uh, well, many people, including most economists, believe, simply believe, it's just a religion, a belief, that you can cope with the aging population. No, there is no way, no way to resolve fundamentally the problem of decreasing and aging population. Okay, physically, absolutely, there is no way to prevent you from aging. 
Okay, then the third lecture will deal with, it was what we're gonna discuss, what we can do to mitigate the impact of aging population, okay? There will be a lot of ways to mitigate, a lot of mitigations, but no resolutions. So I can say it's like a human life, okay? There's no way to avoid death. Everybody will die, Cain said so. <laughs> we will be dying <laughs> dead eventually, <laughs> everybody. But anyway, uh, no, there's no way to avoid death, but when all of a sudden you learn that, then your real life starts, how you can live until you die, okay? Once you learn aging and decreasing population is inevitable, then all of a sudden you can start thinking about how we survive until we die, and how we how our next generation will survive until they die. And that will really create the real good country, okay? Economy, the same thing. Uh, I, I, I've talked too much about, okay, I don't want to let you sleep, so I have to. Okay, okay, okay. I try to be a little more stimulus than most Japanese lectures, so. Uh, could, could you turn this light off to make it a little more, uh, yes. This down light, it, it's good for wedding to make it look my skin a little better than reality. <laughs> uh, these are mainly, mainly for women. Anyway, uh, okay. Uh, you don't need it. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> ah, the first, I, I put, well. I'm 45 years old, and uh, I'm not so good at the, using these. Uh, okay. Yeah, here's the population structure. Uh, well, uh, as one thing Dr. Prof. Usher said, it was wrong. I'm not so specialized in demographics. I'm the original economy promotion specialist. But once I started thinking about it and the observing the reality, I all of a sudden, I, I, well, as soon as, uh, no sooner or later, I became studying about demographics because I found it the dominant factor, as he explained. It's a dominant factor, a lot more dominant than economy. That really decides the future of the regional economy. Then later I learned it's about the same about national economy and also world economy. And this is the population structure of Singapore. Most professional divide man and woman because only women can have next generation. Actually, if you don't have men, no one, no problem. Only frozen sperm is needed. But if you don't have women, there's no kids, okay? I'm sorry, uh, maybe it's not so decent to say that in Singapore. Uh, but. Uh, so usually, demographic specialists uh, will, will always divide men and women, but I don't do that because I don't care whether you are what man or woman in terms of economy. Maybe woman's a little better than man, but anyway, I don't, I don't say so. Uh, so here, this is the accumulation of men and women, of Singaporean, it doesn't include the foreigners living here, and it, it's the, this is the year they were born. It's easier to understand, okay? So you, you can easily tell which which tower you belong to? Maybe here? No. Uh, does anybody be, was born before the war or this? You know, after the war, you had a sharp increase of the population here, okay? I really uh, have to apologize. Maybe Japan did a lot to decrease this population. I'm very sorry about that. And, and, but right after that, you start prospering. And you see, the majority of Singaporeans, the, those who were born between 1961 and 65, uh, does anybody here, do anybody here, does anybody here as the one belong to this segment? Uh, please raise your hand if you were born between 1961 and 65. Oh, we are the only two <laughs> born. <laughs> so you, most of them are a lot younger, right? But see, between year 1981 and 85, the number of the newborn Singaporean were small, smaller. Okay, those who were born between this time, please raise your hand. Oh, somehow, a, a little more than we, us. And now we had another peak. You know why this peak was born? It's very easy to understand for, to, why this number is bigger than this. Birth rate improved? No, 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 no. Economists always talk about birth rates. It's nonsense. Birth rate is one of the two 
dominant factor of the population. You can just increase or decrease the birth rate, maybe, but you cannot change the number of parents. If you have more women at the age of good or adequate to have kids, then you have a lot of babies. Okay, not only birth rate, but the number of the parents really affects the number of kids. And because Singaporean has become late married, late marriage is becoming prevalent, so after 30 years, newborn kids was increased. increased. Okay, and if you have less parents, then you have less kids. Then uh, maybe after 10 years, they start having kids, babies. Then maybe the number will increase or just stay flat. But after that, these people will become parents. Then you will see decrease of the baby. Do you understand the logics? Okay. This is the structure of Singapore. And if you see the structure of, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm still not uh, used to this. Uh, can I use uh, this direction? This direction. Uh, this direction. Uh, Japan. Uh, you know, uh, excuse me. Ooh. Japan has 25 times more population than Singapore and has. Uh, so it's a, it's a million. You see, the structure skews to the elder part. We had baby boom right after the war, during, right after the war. I'm sorry. Yeah, so the, the, this is the majority in Japan. Okay. Uh, you know what happened in the war? Japan killed so many people everywhere. And actually, we were killed, but they, largely by bombing. Except Okinawa and Iwo Jima, we didn't fight inside Japan. The largest victims is the Filipino in terms of ratio of who were killed. I feel so sorry about the Philippines. The, something similar to Okinawa happened in the Philippines. And, uh, but largely, Japan surrendered before the, we started fighting inside Japan, except Okinawa. So Okinawa didn't have baby boom because even very young people were killed during the war. So after five or six years or so, not so many people were get bo got born. But Japan, right after the war, actually at the end period, everybody was just you know, thinking they will die even sooner or later. But after that, we, we enjoyed peace. So many babies were born. And they, those baby boomers got baby during, before the oil shock. And after the oil shock, we saw a real decrease of the number of the babies, not because of the oil shock, because our living standard became very high, okay? Uh, so we have basically two major top, and if you compare Japan and Singapore, it's like this. Uh, if you want to compare the two countries with so huge different, different, uh, different uh, population, you can just compare the proportion to the pop total population, okay? Percent percentage of the each segment to the total population of the country. Then you can compare the same two countries together, and you see Japan has so many over 75. Ooh. And we have less younger kids, and also big difference is we have less 40s compared to Singapore. Japan is yellow, Singapore is blue, okay? So do you, you can tell this economic situation easily. We have more public expense for elderlies, and we have less consumption by middle-aged people. And also, if you say, if you are selling some goods for kids, maybe we, we don't sell well in Japan. So so different. But most of them already have noticed. So what's going to happen in Singapore in next 20 years? Okay, does anybody think that the, all those Singaporeans will die before they become 75? Uh, do you know the average, newest average life expectancy of Singapore? 80s, yes, it's over 80. And how, how is the, how, you know the rank in the world? I think it's number three? Three or four, very high. And you know the Japan, you know how, what is like that in Japan? It's the it's highest. But very slight difference between Singapore and Japan. So, uh, from a Western point of view, somehow in the, maybe the gene we have, we have the t talent to live long with less power. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so 
something similar is happening in Singapore and Japan. Actually, maybe it's not related to gene, as maybe Dr. Professor Asher knows quite a lot. It actually, it's not related to religion or gene or something. Actually, if you're living standard, per capita GDP is about the same in Japan and Singapore, then we have a similar thing. And also, your medical standard is very high, even higher than Japan, maybe. Then you will see nobody died before 75. So, uh, actually, Japan, 20 years ago, 1990, Japan, 1990, population structure shown in yellow towers looks just alike Singaporean population structure now. You understand that? There's only 15 years difference. Well, you can see minor difference. We had more, a little more elderly. We had a little less middle age, but basically the shape is the same. So, like flying geese theory, really, you know, you sense another flying geese theory Dr. Asher mentioned. Isn't Singaporean running, flying after Japan to the, this kind of situation? So after 20 years or 15 years, maybe Singapore will become like this yellow part. Because you don't really expect Singaporean to die before being 75. Actually, every, if you average is 80, okay, average always become lower by newborn baby's death. If the average is 80, then actually real average for those who survived until 50, real average will become 85. You understand that? So we're going to see the extreme situation here. Okay, this is the silver tsunami animation. Uh, well, actually, this is a lot funner uh, per, uh, view than real tsunami that hit Indonesia and the Thai. But tsunami is a Japanese, you know that? Because they, we uh, have the recorded, we, if you count all recorded tsunami in the world, we have about 70%. <laughs> And also, somebody counted the recorded earthquakes in the world. 65% was in Japan. Anyway, it's terrible. But anyway, this is the Japan shifting, uh, starting up 60 years ago, uh, to 70 years ago, until 40 years later. Okay, just, I didn't explain. Just show, see it. And silver tsunami, starting up from here just pass through all, all the generations. You, you, you saw that? This was five years, uh, just before the war. Okay, just before the invasion of Japan to Singapore. Uh, why Japanese were so violent? One of the reasons, okay, one of the reasons is this. Like every developing countries, we had the same structure of overburden of newborn babies. Even though the fertility rate is pretty high, was pretty high, those people will demand jobs. But there is no enough work in labor power, no enough food for them. And what's going to happen? That's something they argue like, uh, in the word, with the word youth bulge, or youth belch, youth bul bulge, thank you. It's bulge. So uh, they have to find the land somewhere else. Or they maybe, they, that was not true, but they thought so. And see, uh, actually in Southeast Asia, or South Asia, Pakistan and Cambodia has a similar structure right now. India is a little different. You know, why so Pakistan and Afghanistan, so many people are doing something violent? Well, it's not because of religion. It's not be just because of the United States. Partly, but basically, there are tons of human, human life that can be, well, dispraved. Then, after the war, many Japanese returned from the outside world. Uh, one in the four who migrated to China died, died. But anyway, many of them recovered, retired, uh, returned to Japan, and there was no way to invade other country uh, at this time, okay? Japan is the country who abandoned the militaristic option 
And since then, last 60 years, no foreigners, not a one foreigner was killed by Japanese army force ever. Uh, anyway, uh, we had a baby boom. It's ridiculous because we didn't have industry. We didn't have food. Actually, we were really suffering from the war. But still, they had baby. Somehow, they had hope. And also, they have couples. Uh, uh, the birth rate was 4.3. Okay, 4.3. A lot higher than current Indonesia or current anywhere in the Southeast Asia. Uh, a little near to Brunei, but not a lot higher. Okay, then we had very few number of old people. <laughs> but they grew older, okay? They grew older. And in the 60s, it was a time of Japan, the political problem, you know, that there was the real, real uh, argument with the angry youth. Why angry youth appeared? Because they were thinking they will not have, have enough job, okay? And so, and that was the time of the war between communists and the capitalists, and they were at the side of the communists, and the, we had a huge argument and violent things inside Japan. But then miracle happened. Japan succeeded to give them job. Why? Well, we start exporting, as China did just a decade ago. We start producing a little better things to export to the United States. Okay? Then it's really a miracle, but we could feed them almost all. We could give them, almost all of them, a job with the exporting industry. So that's why that was a miracle of Japanese economic boom, and we had really less number of kid, uh, elder people, and the government at that time made a very big mistake, okay? They start providing pension funds. Uh, they, they established pension fund system in Japan at this time. The system, basic system was gathering money from these people and feeding those people. It's different from Singaporean system. Singaporean pension fund system is basically, I've heard, you know, same generation's money goes into same generation. Young people don't feed elder people. But Japanese system, they adapted a system to collect money from here, directly using money to this generation. Why? Uh, the reason is very easy. Uh, those generations lost their money during the war, lost their houses. They don't have savings. So that's why. Also, many of them lost their kids, too, during the war. And that's why they didn't have enough. So they start adopted that system. That was uh, actually later turned out to be a real problem with Japan. Uh, but we survived oil shock. There was no problem for oil shock. Do you understand why? Because, well, after the oil shock, our export declined. But they start buying things for themselves. It's about a time they start, we start having refrigerator. It's about a time we all of us start having cars. Maybe 10 years earlier than Singaporean, maybe, but not so big difference. Then there was a huge demand, domestic demand inside Japan. So that's why we nurtured so strong industry inside Japan. And this was the peak of the Japanese economy, 1990. It's a bubble economy, so we call it. I hope the current Singapore is not a bubble, but or China. <laughs> Actually, China's Chinese situation is like this, like, like this. Yeah, so you, you grew with the export. Uh, Chinese situation is like, uh, I'm sorry, 1970. Hmm? Yeah. You, start, you, you, grew, you are growing with the export, but now you are transferring yourself into you know, domestic economy, oriented economy. It's a Chinese at this period, okay? But, after 10 years, so China will see the similar situation, I think, I think 10 years later, or 15, maybe. Uh, you will see the same situation, like bubble economy. Real growth of the demand, domestic demand was at their peak. Why it was peak? Why did, didn't it grow more? Because baby boomer was going over 45. Now I'm 45. You know, what is 45 is so important in Japan. Uh, early 40s and late 30s is the age you buy your house. And uh, why? Land price is so high. Okay, we, we, all of Japan is a freehold. Land price is very important. And uh, you have to pay a lot for just for land. And you, ha you need down payment. You have to work 10 years at least to pay the down payment. 
then so you, you buy after late 30s and around 40, you buy a house, and they had to buy it because half of them were not inheriting houses from their parents. Birth rate was 4.3. Okay, half of the baby boomers don't ha cannot will not would not ha inherit house from their parents. That's why they bought house so hugely. So that was a big boom inside Japan. All the materials and houses were made in, made in Japan. So that was a real increase of the demand for industrial things. But it ended quickly because baby boomers were born basically in three years. In just in three years, from 40, 1946 to 1949. Then uh, these generations start buying houses, but these generations, numbers are almost equivalent to their parents. Not so different. Only baby boomers are double of their parents. In other generation in Japan, most generations about the same number of their parents or smaller. Okay, so all of a sudden we start having empty houses, over capacity, over supply of the houses cause situations something like similar in current United States. But most economists don't care about demography at all. They start saying, oh, it's a foolish Japanese failure of the last 10 years with no adequate policy, they are suffering from economic crisis. No, 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 no. It's just the side effect of the war, okay? It's a side effect of the war that happened 40 years ago. Before then, we, nobody could avoid it. Actually, Singaporeans are very wise, so you are now counting the number of the population who's gonna buy the house and they're supplying those maybe but even Singaporeans are not so wise in terms of the commercial properties. You, I think, will provide for supplying over capacity of the shopping centers. Because uh, it, most economies says, you know, if your productivity increases, there's no problem. Okay, productivity can be increased easily by machinery. Okay, but your productivity in terms of consumption the amount you buy in one day, the amount you consume per hour will not increase so easily. Do you know what I mean? Once you're satisfied with your current material situation, most people stop pursuing more luxury <laughs> environment. Most people pursue start, start pursuing something mental, more decent aspect, something more healthy, Everybody start jogging, but they don't buy shoes so often, okay? Then Japan already faced that situation at this point. But that was about a peak of the working age population. Do you know working age population? Working age population, in definition, by definition, it's a population between 15 and 64. I think it actually 15 is too young. 64 is a little old, too older. So real working age is between 20 and the 60. But this is the universal definition of the working age, 15 to 64, it's 86 million. Then we we'll already saw the great decline of working age population in the last 10 years. Five million decrease of working age population it, from 86 to 81. Why? Because the, those who were born be, right before the war is retiring and the new entrance, uh, new entrant to the working age is decreasing it's inevitable. Nobody can change this course. And still, baby boomers are working. And we are seeing their retirement in the near future. So Japan economy will struggle a lot more. Not because of the politics, not because of Hatoyama, okay? Not because the Koizumi's retirement. It's just because of the demography. We'll see less sales of car inside Japan. And talking about Singapore, if you don't sell the car inside Japan, Singapore, you don't mind. Actually, you don't, you're not producing cars. But we are producing cars. <laughs> so that's why we'll see a real problem. We have to find somebody else to buy our cars. Okay? And then uh, we're going to see a huge, huge boom in elderly economy. Or if you, say, if you can say it's economy. Ooh. 
year, 30 years later, the largest population segment is over 85. <laughs> Even though our average life expectancy remains 80. Okay, average is 80. So many people go over average, like my, my words. I, mean, I, I talk too much than average. Uh, so everybody gets a lot older than average. So we see 10 million people over 85 years old, with only 3 million and from between 0 and 4. Uh, I have to mention, this, this projection is a government, Japanese government's projection. Okay? You can retrieve it from the home page, even though it's in Japanese. And uh, government, you know, Japanese government is very conservative. And also try to hide something. You know, or, uh, actually, this projection is very, very, very optimistic. So real, no scholar in Japan used this because they're expecting more death, actually. <laughs> more birth, birth, actually. And also they're expecting more introduction of foreign laborers, foreign population. Actually, this number is not only Japanese. This includes the foreigners living in Japan. Okay, So they are expecting more foreigners living in Japan 30 years later. But still, the situation is the same. Do you know why? Because we have... 127 million people. If you add 1 million more, it doesn't count at all. If you add maybe 10 million more, it counts a little bit. It's not like Singapore. If you add 1 mil more million Indian people, intelligent Indian or those people living in Singapore, start choosing Singapore, then that will count greatly because you have only 5 million in total. 1 more million is really great. But if we add 10, 1 million more million Indian in Japan, living in Japan, we can do that. It doesn't count at all. And also intelligent Indian will not have so many kids anyway, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, and so you see it's the opposite of the 50 years ago. This is a silver tsunami. And uh, okay, I have to sum up uh, the role uh, with the, and I have to discuss the start. This, but uh, in the last 10 minutes, I have to, describe what's happening. And these are, this is the part, something that is not written at all, something that is not mentioned at all, most important things. Okay? One theory one, your number of the employment changes along with the number of working age population. There's no correlation between um, employment and employment. Theory number one, okay? Uh, every economist just believes, it's just belief, no proof at all, but just the, their belief, unemployment and employment correlate oppositely. No correlation at all in Japanese history. Most time, unemployment, employment go together. I mean, when unemployment increased, employment increased too. Why? At those periods, more kids are entering into labor market. Less people were retiring. You know, if you have more kids entering the labor market than more than the retiring people, what happens? Both unemployment and employment increase. Do you understand this theory easily? Well, if it's in Singapore, maybe some people leave the Singapore to go, go back to their country. But Japan has been closed economy. <laughs> And once retiring people is more than entering young kids, what happens? Whatever happens to the economy, employment decreases. This is actually happening. It remains flat. Even though this employment includes the uh, unskilled part-time labor, very, very uh, low wage. It, it, it includes. So uh, because of the part-time jobbers increase, and many housewives start working, started working uh, under recession, the numbers still stay about the same. But if we don't, didn't have so many housewives like Singapore, I mean, almost all, all the women already have been working, then you'll see the decrease of the working age, or rural employment, along with the decrease of the working age people. And next five years, we are expecting to see four million decrease of working age population about this level by year to year uh, 2015, then I'm sure we're going to see the decrease of the work in employment at least 1 million, 2 million. And that really hurts the economy. 
uh, to what kind of direction? Uh, do you think, does anybody think that the, in the last 10 years, Japan has been seeing no increase in employment because of, the in, because of the, no increase of the working age population? Then do you think, the, what happens to Japanese export? Do you have any idea? Okay, I start, I just you know, continue talking too much. I want to raise your, all of you raise your hand, either right or left. Okay, in largely in last 10 years, within, after 1995, under the decrease, start decrease of the working age population, Japanese export increased or decreased either. It was not flat at all. Okay, if you think Japanese export increased, raise your right hand. If you think the Japanese export decreased, raise your left hand. Okay, one, two, three, wait. Oh, bet, bet it, don't, 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 uh, don't neglect. Thank you, thank you very much. About a half and a half. Of course, of course. Of course it, I'm sorry, it's not so quick response. Or maybe I'm doing something wrong. Okay, I'm sorry. Of course, uh, this is the amount of the export, rural export. You see, it's, a, it's an island. This number is very correct. We don't have so many illegal export. Okay, Japanese export after 1995 doubled. Okay, you understand? Our export increased so much. The record. That's something different from what you heard about Japan's Japanese economy by American stupid writer, okay? Uh, actually, I, I, like, I personally like America very much. I have so many American friends, but I'm, I don't really like American economists and American writers. Uh, some of them are maybe Japanese. But anyway, <laughs> they don't really see the figure at all. As you see, I always use absolute figure I try to avoid using ratio as much as possible. I never use mature aging maturity ratio. That is the number, you know, the age, old age population divided by total population. I never use it or I dislike those who use it. I don't use it. Okay, I, so I really stick to real number, absolute number. Absolute number tells you everything. Okay, we saw real rapid increase in export. Why? Because one of the reasons is China prospered, so they became very good customer for us. But the other profound reason, why didn't China, why we start using, producing something in China instead of some, producing something in Japan with so huge wage? Because, because retirement people, number of retirement exceeded number of new entrants. Okay, our productivity automatically increased. Do you know what happened? We are the largest machinery producer in the world. Instead of hiring people, we start using atomic boy. Uh, uh, what's that? Uh, we start using uh, robots, yes, thank you. And uh, so our productivity increased. So even though our Japanese wage is very expensive, Japanese product didn't become expensive. Okay, we became price competitive because of the retirement. So our export really increased. But during this period of the decre under decreasing working age population, what happened to domestic consumption? Well, I already showed you the answer, so I didn't want you to raise your hand. You see, uh, this one. This one is the domestic sales. Uh, this one is the domestic sales, uh, uh, including the gas. Uh, including gas and excluding gas. Uh, gasoline has excluded Oh, yes, thank you, backward, thank you. I'm so, I'm sorry, I'm the exception from almost all Japanese, so well high, familiar to high tech, but I'm rather low tech. Uh, this is the, the gross sales inside Japan, excluding the gas and including gas, not so big difference, but including gas is a slight increase, excluding gas, slight decrease. You see, even our f external sales doubled. Our domestic sales shrinked. Why? 
productivity and consumption is very difficult to increase. When you get older, you consume l less. Okay? Every economist in the world don't know, don't neglect this fundamental problem. How you can increase the productivity of consumption? It's a very contradictory word. Consumptionivity or something, you know. How you can increase the per cap per hour consumption of elder people? It's impossible. They don't want materialistic things. Okay? They want health. They don't need money to get health. They just need an endurance, then you can get health. Then, you know, our domestic sales is struggling, even though our personal income, its accumulation of personal income reported to tax office has been increasing because of the high export eventually returned to personal income because many of the, our Japanese are stockholders of large exporters. You see, it's a very, very cruel thing. Even though the personal income increased, so much, no consumption, domestic consumption increased. And this is the figure. I've never seen any other people have been arguing, but it's not my fiction. It's for just the absolute value with zero from government statistics. It's a result of not a sample investigation, but it's a result of the whole investigation, official investigation statistics investigating all the Japanese. So it's true. Uh, well, it's a pretty legal country. So you can trust on this. That's this. Okay, this, then I will end, finish. Uh, the last remaining part is the, the other, some, uh, uh, here's the car sales. Our car sales has been decreasing, so. Okay, this, maybe this is a, uh, voice of the God, the uh, God has actually finished this. <laughs> okay, uh, there are some, some remaining uh, sheets explaining something similar, uh, dropping uh, somehow, uh, even though under increasing personal income, we have been seeing also increasing GDP. GDP is just a fiction, calculated figure that includes both exports and domestic demand. So GDP can grow with the export. It's not related at all to domestic things. It's totally against economic theory, okay? Economic theory says things, the GDP is the first, then all of the domestic demands and employment comes from GDP. No, 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 GDP is just a result, accumulation of exports and domestic demand, and basic factor is the population, demographics. Then after that comes the exports and the internal demand, then that will make up the GDP. You can say it's going up and down, it's nothing. It doesn't tell anything. Toyota is, has been enjoyed, it has enjoyed record sales outside Japan until the last year before last year, but their internal sales has been dropping all the same. Okay. And all the other things, taxable personal income, car sold, domestic passenger transportation by car, domestic freight transportation, books and magazine, number of the books and magazine published, all those numbers resembles. Uh, so I suspect maybe you will see similar situation in Singapore later in China. Uh, okay, our only increasing things are our senior age population and the social welfare expense by the government. <laughs> direct, direct relation, very direct. Government is lacking money running a total huge deficit. <sighs> okay, uh, this is the last sheet. Okay, Japan is already here. Singapore is still here. Pakistan is above there. But that was about the same as Japan in 1930. Japan has been tracking, uh, following this, this track. And this is the sweet spot where Singapore is. Uh, I'm excuse me. Um, I'm sorry, okay. This is the work, I'm sorry, I'm using the ratio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because if you want to compare the countries with different population, you have to do this. But I don't admit dividing senior age population by total population, it's nothing. You should divide senior age population by working age population. This is a real figure. 
okay? Don't include senior age population in both. <laughs> then, you know, once you start aging, I mean, your life expectancy becomes long and the former baby boomer in their 60 years, 65 years, then you will see this situation like Germany, Italy, France, and UK. And before that, if you have very high birth rate, you go up. Maybe, I hope most of you have your country here. UAE is a rural exception. exception. They have so many huge foreign labors. Uh, it's a very odd country where Dubai is. <laughs> uh, Singapore. So I say you are at the best point, but you will never go up again. Then can you stop here, avoiding coming here? Well, if Singaporeans start dying at 60s, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> like Russian, average death age of Russian is 55, 59, mainly because they drink too much. But one virtuous thing about Singaporean, I see much less drunken, drink drunker, <laughs> much less drinking here compared to Japan and North China. So how you can do? Let them smoke more? <laughs> I don't want you to smoke so much. Okay, uh, let's gonna discuss what to do, what's gonna happen to each country next time. But before that, I wanna discuss with you about the Japanese experience. And the, yeah, I think there are tons of points you can just go into. You're saying something contradictory that I, I'm ready to discuss. Thank you very much. Thank you for showing that few pictures are worth few million words and giving such wonderful insight on Japan's dynamics that uh, out, those outside of Japan who don't read Japanese don't pick up uh, very easily. Uh, who would like to ask the first question, please? First, Thank you for these fascinating pictures. At the risk of anticipating what's in your next talk, I'm wondering how much of what you've observed about Japan is to some extent Japan-specific. Sorry, have you found similar patterns with consumption in aging societies, for example, Italy or Spain? And if I can throw in an observation, even though the U.S. is, again, not as far along as uh, Japan, at least what I'm aware of in the U.S. is that as people get older, actually quite far along in age, maybe not 85, but through their 60s, actually people spend more, yeah. they consume more. So to that extent, I'm wondering how much of this is to some extent Japan specific and may reflect either cultural factors, geographic factors, and so on in Japan. To the point and very specific question, this is the best question maybe. Uh, first, I have to say, okay, uh, I'm just the actually advocator and presenter in Japan, and how you can make presentation 400 times a year. The only solution is to de decrease the quality. <laughs> so I'm saying the same thing again, again, again. But I have to, ex and I didn't have enough time to explore that. But, well, okay. But, uh, but from the, so the, what I'm going to say is the answer is the not, not result, not the result of research, but the, by my uh, feeling and also sounding. Uh, maybe I can prove it later, but I, I didn't have enough time. Okay, yes. Very unique Japanese feature, maybe there are three. Okay, one, baby boomers were born only within three years. That is very short. Okay, after three years, the baby boom ended. Birth rate was above four, only for three years, and became 2.5 right after that. No term of three, birth rate three. I mean, so it's so fast. So, so th things come extreme in Japan, more than other country. You understand that? And also, the other extreme is that our life expectancy is the longest in the world. <laughs> the Americans are not so, because we eat less fat, maybe. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> I'm not sure. But, uh, but actually, Singaporeans eat a lot of fat, but you're healthy, so I don't, I'm not sure. <laughs> but anyway, so that's, that's not a very extreme point. And uh, 
third ex difference point is consumption, yes. Uh, some kind of investigation uh, research says somehow if you ask Japanese elder people, what are you going to do? What are you, do you want most, do most? They answer, ah, we want to work. <laughs> Regardless whether they are women or men, they say they want to work after they become 75. And if you ask the same thing to German uh, with 55 years old, what are you going to do? Well, we're on a vacance without any labor. I mean, uh, we'll take a perpetual vacance. We don't want to work. So that's a big difference, very, very big difference. So they say poor those old Japanese never have never learned how to play around. <laughs> well, I'm not sure, but it's a, maybe a natural tendency or some kind of a heretical threat, a cultural threat that they, you should st always continue working. So th maybe that can go b well later, maybe, because they continue working. But the, already it's wor working very badly because they have the huge saving. They don't use it. Uh, and uh, so I'm always thinking about the making Flor Florida. Yeah? I mean, Florida. In Florida State, United States, they don't have income tax. They have only consumption tax and inheritance tax. And th this, the government is healthy, I mean, in financial, in terms of financial. I'm not sure. Maybe you, they have a problem, but anyway, it's better than Japan, maybe. But if you do that in Japan, uh, older people never consume. Uh, uh, well, it's a, it's a number of Merrill Lynch research. You, maybe you know it. Uh, there, at that time, the, there was a uh, millionaire in the world, about 9.5 mil, 9 million millionaires who has more than 1 million US dollar uh, equivalent financial assets, okay, uh, excluding real estate. And out of 9.5 million, okay, do you know how many were Japanese out of 9.5 million? I didn't know that. Uh, 1.5 million people out of 9.5 world total was a Japanese. Okay, one in six millionaires of the world is a Japanese. <laughs> Nobody knows it. Nobody feel it. We are under very severe recession of consumption. <laughs> So they're going to just leave their money. They, half of the money went into the government bond, but half is now buying your stocks. So we are now accumulating huge interest from the world. Okay? Then eventually, we're going to inherit those peop all the elder people's property. Okay? And we have inheritance tax, but only 10%, less than 10% of Japanese paying inheritance tax. Only super rich is charged. Then we're going to get money later, eventually. But ev this is the most funny part. Average age of such inheritance in terms of the receiver in Japan, you know how old they are in average when you receive, yeah, 67. <laughs> 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 Maybe I will not consume. <laughs> Maybe I will leave money to my kid. But many of the parents didn't have, don't have kids so far. So government will recover money later, one century later, maybe century. But that's the situation. Thank you for your delightful speech. Um, just now you mentioned that um, the Japanese government made a huge mistake in establishing uh, pensions for the senior people. So I'm just wondering, suppose uh, some of these people are my parents or my professors, like Professor Ma uh, I'm Chinese, so definitely this is not going to be the case. I'm just assuming that uh, if this is the case, I would be really happy for them. My point is, um, of course, we want to have a very strong economy, but at the same time, we also want to keep our old people. Um, we, we want them to have a good life, right? We don't want them to die miserably. That's right. And we want them to live as long as they could, right? Sure. So, I mean, it seems that there is a tension between the economic growth and the senior people's welfare. The senior people are increasingly seen as obstacles or barriers to economic growth which is morally perhaps not that um, right, I don't know. 
So uh, from your perspective, do you think there are any way to compromise, I mean, to reconcile? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, actually, it's immoral to, uh, you know, or mm, immoral to uh, let our parents suffer from economic lack of money. Not only immoral, but also against the economy too, because everybody will get old. If you are cruel to older, you will get be, you know, in different difficult situation later. So it's like uh, in Chinese proverb or Japanese proverb, it's the same as from China. If you just, then you, you get revenge. <laughs> okay, so, it, well, we call that that. Uh, it's a Chinese way. Uh, maybe you have the similar thing. Uh, but most of the proverbs of Japan is from China. And uh, talking about China, so seeing Japanese situation, they are not applying, fully applying the pension fund system. So I think, I'm, I, I wonder, I'm afraid maybe many elderly people in China will suffer the, with the lack of the sufficient pension fund system. So, so uh, I'm sorry for saying something. Uh, I try to be always funny and the, maybe saying something insulting, but I really know the things that the one co any society not respecting the elderly will, dis will destroy themselves by doing that. The only exception maybe is the Netherlands. Netherlands has a legal, and it's make it legal, not illegal, legal to uh, make it a cons death with consent. I mean, elder people, if we want, want elder people want to commit suicide, doctor inject something, and that's legal in Netherlands. And that's quite different from the, I, I respect, personally respect Netherlanders so much. They are the most rational people in the world. Uh, they say they are more practical. But they are very, very individualistic. No elder people are forced to, being forced to de die by kids because people are very independent. They don't rely on each other and they can judge themselves. But if you do that in Japan, many elder people will be killed by kids, I'm sure. So we'll, we'll never have those system. We should never have it. Actually, we had it. Japan has been so poor society. In mountainous area, there used to be a custom to abandon the elderly to the mountain. In some very poor mountain area, actually my ancestor is, one of my ancestors coming from those area. Uh, yeah, my ancestor has been uh, the boss of this small village for 700 years. I have very strong gene with that. With the, um, I, but no Japanese do that, okay? No Japanese do that. <laughs> it's, a, it's, of course, crime, but before it's becoming a crime, we stopped doing that. Nobody wants to do that. So now that's why Japan is keeping uh, this system, and it's impossible to overthrow it because voting ratio of young people is very low in Japan. And voting ratio of elderly is about 100%. So politically, elderly people has so strong power. Thanks to the God, it's a real democratic society, <laughs> okay? It's more democratic than the United States. I mean, our prime minister is not shot, okay? Not, not threatened, we just neglect them. We don't have to kill them, they have no power, okay? <laughs> That's a Japanese system. We have power in Japan, elderly people has pow have power. Everybody respect their vote, so we can never change this system. Then, what are we gonna do? Okay, that's the next question. The only quest solution is let them consume more, or let them inherit, let their kids inherit their property earlier than the parents' death. Well, there are many questions. I would appreciate if we can keep both the questions and the answers short. Sorry. Yeah, my name is Ko Chin Hua, a member of the public. Actually, the point I wanted to make was already made uh, uh, at your last point about inheritance earlier. You don't want the lives, you don't want to kill the old, you just want their money. <laughs> so how to have a system whereby just you, you transfer or you have a redistribution from the old to the young. As you mentioned earlier, the government make a mistake by, uh, by taxing, by transferring money from the young to the old. And now it's making the same mistake, another mistake by not transferring the old to the young. So what kind of system can you come up with that you can facilitate that without killing them? Thank you. Uh, that will be the main topic of the third session. 
So uh, I don't want to sum up now, but actually uh, there are a lot of, lot of different aspects of that. Not only that will resolve just part of the problem, but the, we have to do something. The, the key is inheritance tax. Thanks to the God, we have the death system after the war. And you don't have it. So uh, it's a big difference of Japan and Singapore, maybe. Uh, what I Can you say it again? Okay, uh, Paul Kai Hong from the, uh, the faculty here, and I teach health policy. I just want to ask you a question related to, uh, well, I'll share all your sentiments about the effects of demography, which is uh, really um, uh, never, never very highlighted in a lot of policies. But one of the things that distinguish uh, Japan uh, will be your cultural factors, I think. You know, for example, the, the effects of migration. I mean, there's a very closed uh, society, relatively sp yeah. speaking. And then the, uh, I can't let you go away without making some comments about cultural factors again. And that is your point about um, the, the effects of demography pushing people into uh, acts of wars and aggression. I, I don't think I subscribe to that. I think it will have to be, uh, be related to your distribution of land and the, the, uh, the, the, equ the equity. Because post-war Japan is probably more socialistic. Okay? Yeah. And also the cultural factor about your gender differences, I think, about care of the elderly and why there's a... There's a preference until recently in the, the Long-Term Care Insurance Act. There was a cultural difference in terms of relying on women to take care of uh, the, the aging population. Thanks. Thank you very much. So here's a very good, important point that actually Japan can increase the working age population in terms of economy very easily. Yes, we're going to discuss it about in the third session. But only 40% of Japanese women are currently working. You can change the ratio easily then that will actually increase the population in terms of economy. Yes. Uh, my name is Ais, I'm just a lay person. <clears throat> so my question here, number one, with regard to the justification, with regard to the, uh, the emotional aspect of the war, because you say that, you know, in the context of uh, the uh, unemployment situation, uh, is that your own personal, or do you think that that one is you really have gone into deeper than that, and not personal, but you know, it's a Japanese perception. Now, my second uh, main question is, with regard to the population dimension, uh, well, rural and urban composition, how disparity is that from your analysis? Okay. Yep. Thank a you. And thirdly, sir, thirdly, with regard, you, you, you didn't cover for this particular session, but the re-engineering that you, Japan, is initiating uh, aggressively, will you be covering in the net paper? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Okay, the, the second part is easier. I just, uh, just overpassed. Uh, okay, uh, birth rate differs greatly in Japan, depending on this rural or countryside. Okinawa has actually a very high birth rate, 1.8. It's a very desirable birth rate. Actually, the highest in the East Asia, I think. <laughs> and uh, Tokyo has only 1.09, lower than Singapore. And we are now accumulating young guys into the Tokyo area. So that's really destroying the population quickly. And then if you just justify it, you know, you know let peop young people leave Tokyo, then it will, that will be a big improvement. Okay, the, the first part uh, is uh, the emotion. Okay, I'm the son of the, guy, uh, the parents who was killed. Uh, my grandparents were killed during the war by bomb. And the, so maybe I'm a little side of the, those who were against the war. During the, and my, but uh, largely the emotion side of the right after war in Japan may be the, uh, something not so different from what I described. But I talked it in the emotional way. But in Okinawa, definitely, we didn't have baby boomer because so many people, young guys, were killed during the war, like Philippines and other countries. Uh, and, and the third point was the, what, what did you ask? The third point was the? The engineering, the problem, reversing the problem yeah. that Japan is already initiating greatly. Not, not really, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, that's, my la that's my job in the, my last half of my life. But maybe it will be too late. Thank you. Any, anybody else has any questions? Hi, I'm JP. I'm from the private sector. Um, I don't know if you touched on this, but do you see any parallels with China? Yeah. My sense is that the population distribution for China is roughly similar to Japan's in the 1990s with those two glots of people. And so my question would be, are there any takeaways or learnings that China can use from Japan um, to kind of foresee any, any pending issues uh, population in the next 15 or 20 years? Yes. Thanks. 
China, China's thing. I actually, I wanted to add. Actually, I eliminated at the last minute about the figure of China because the, that will be the last topic next time, second session. Okay, don't miss the second session because just you know, you all, many of you just want to see the resolution. No, no. If you don't understand about royalty, you never had resolution. Okay. If you totally realize that you're gonna be dead, then you have you cannot start doing exercise. Okay. Uh, but anyway, our uh, China. China is more extreme than Japan. One great thing about Chinese civilization, they have been experiencing the real decrease of population in their long 4,000 years history. They have many times seen the half decrease of their population in one century or so. Okay, so it's different from any other world. It's, uh, they are, you, I think Chinese civilization has experienced a similar thing more and more, again, again, again that they're going to see real not extreme in near future. And everybody knows that before per capita GDP will grow fully. Okay, before the full growth of the per capita GDP, China will face real aging problem. That's, uh, that's something we have to cope with. I mean, we have to, well, if there's any way we should stop, Japan should try help China to uh, stop it because that, that's definitely the key factor of Japanese economy too. You know, we all, all of us, common, with common sense people, want China to be stable and prosper. Okay, but that's very, very difficult because in terms of demography. Uh, and also China has a uh, ethnic problem. I think maybe Muslim China will not decrease so early as uh, uh, you had Han people. So, uh, but I don't know the figure, but largely I, I just want, I, I observe that maybe Han people try, will decrease a lot faster than Muslims and other uh, tribes, people. And that will also cause uh, some difficult situation too. Uh, please expect the second session, thank you. Thank you.